गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द पैथोलॉजी एंड क्लिनिकल सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ डायबिटीज मिलेटिस डायबिटीज मिलेटिस इज अ कॉम्प्लेक्स मेटाबॉलिक डिजीज विच इज कैरेक्टराइज बाय हाइपर ग्लाइसीमिया एंड दिस हाइपर ग्लाइसीमिया इज आइदर ड्यू टू इंसुलिन डिफिशियंसी और टिश्यू रेजिस्टेंस टू एक्शन ऑफ इंसुलिन सो वी हैव problems in all the three metabolisms carbohydrate metabolism protein metabolisms as well as lipid metabolism and because of that there is a very high incidence of complications in diabetes mellitus it's the most common metabolic disorder which is seen over and over the incidence of diabetes mellitus increases with age 2% population of usa are suffering from diabetes and it is now estimated that nearly 5% population of india is suffering from diabetes mellitus by the year 2015 it is believed that nearly 20 to 25% of the urban population of india will be suffering from diabetes mellitus so it's an ever increasing disease worldwide and therefore we have to know about it as as much as possible this is the photo showing the typical counter or appearance of a diabetic patient the pear shaped body now how do you diagnose diabetes the diagnostic criteria for diabetes mellitus are either a random blood sugar about 200 mg per deciliter with clinical signs and symptoms i'll come to that later what are the clinical signs and symptoms seen in diabetes or a fasting blood sugar level which is more than 126 mg per deciliter when the sugar estimation is done more than twice so if for three consecutive readings you get fasting blood sugar level more than 126 mg per deciliter then you can call it as diabetes a single reading or a paired reading is not enough or not sufficient enough to diagnose a patient as a diabetic mellitic patient an abnormal oral glucose tolerance curve where patient is given 75 grams of glucose orally and then his blood sugar is done every half an hour now in such an condition if the 2 hours post glucose blood sugar is more than 200 mg per deciliter then it is definitely diagnosis of diabetes now if what if the sugar is between 140 to 200 about 200 is diabetes below 140 is normal Uh, if it is between 140 to 200 then such a person is thought to be having an abnormal glucose tolerance test okay we'll talk about abnormal glucose tolerance test later on when we'll be discussing uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus later on And the fourth criteria diagnostic criteria is an hba1c which is uh, equal to or more than 6.5% okay This is the latest diagnostic criteria published in Diabetes Care, one two zero one zero. Now, what are the clinical features of diabetes mellitus? The main clinical features are hyperglycemia or increase in blood sugar level, glycosuria or increase or passage of glucose in urine, polyuria that means excessive urination, polydipsia means excessive thirst and excessive intake of fluids, and polyphagia or excessive intake of food or craving for food increase incidence of infections and disturbances of vision like blurred vision development of cataract blindness etc and paresthesia or neurological sensory deficits like tingling numbness or weakness of one of the limbs the lesser symptoms are lethargy stupor weight loss breath smelling of acetone fast labored breathing what is known as kusumans breathing nausea vomiting abdominal pain and urinary infections the lesser symptoms are usually seen in cases of type 1 diabetes mellitus and in type 2 diabetes mellitus is usually polyuria polydipsia which and glycosuria which are the main presenting features now classification of diabetes mellitus you have 
the classification is necessary because the treatment and the pathogenesis of the various types of diabetes is different. We have primary type 1 diabetes mellitus, primary type 2 diabetes mellitus, diabetes mellitus due to genetic disorders. Under these genetic disorders, we can have defects of the beta cell function and defects of the insulin action or insulin processing. Insulin processing means the action of insulin on the insulin receptors. Now, both these things can be affected due to genetic disorders. The, the next uh, type of diabetes or the next the causes of diabetes are usually secondary diabetes means there is some other disease and diabetes is caused because of that disease. You know? So pancreatic diseases can also give rise to diabetes. In this we have chronic pancreatitis or chronic inflammation of the pancreas which causes destruction of the exocrine as well as endocrine part of the pancreas and gives rise to decrease insulin production and diabetes. Fibrocystic disease of the pancreas which is a uh, genetic disorder, congenital disorder. In these patients, we have fibrocystic changes in the lungs, in the bile tracts. They also develop diabetes. Pancreatic calculi or stone formation or concrete formation in the pancreatic ducts. Usually alcoholics develop this pancreatic calculi. In addition, there is an area around Hubli and Belgaum where there is a high incidence of pancreatic calculi. So they, one of the pathologists there has been trying to find out the cause, but he has still been not able to pinpoint and find out what is the cause of this pancreatic calcula in that particular area. And last of all, neoplasms or tumors of the pancreas, either benign or malignant, can give rise to diabetes. Other endocrine diseases like Cushing syndrome, Cushing syndrome means hyperadrenalism, that also can give rise to diabetes because of increased levels of steroids. Okay. PCD or polycystic ovarian disease can also cause diabetes and diabetic like changes. Now in this PCOD you have multiple cysts developing in the ovaries and because of this cyst developing in the ovaries there is no follicle formation and that gives rise to increase in estrogen. And this is hyperestrogenism in turn causes hormonal disturbances and induces diabetes. Infections, especially viral infections due to Kaksaki virus, cytomegalovirus and mumps virus can induce diabetes because of they, their direct destructive action on the pancreas. They lodge in the pancreatic cells and they multiply in the pancreatic cells and destroy these pancreatic cells. And that gives rise to diabetes. Drugs can induce diabetes. The best two examples are again steroids. Steroids in small doses given a long period of time or steroids given as a big bolus. Both can induce diabetes. Then <coughs> diuretic agents like hydrochlorothiazides, they can also induce diabetes. Why this should be mentioned? Because patients who have diabetes, if they have renal impairment, you should avoid giving them hydrochlorothiazides or diuretic agents which are causing, which are derived from hydrochlorothiazide or lasix like derivatives. They should be given some other type of uh, diuretics. Then chromosomal abnormalities like Turner syndrome, Klinefelter syndrome and Brown syndrome that is mongolism. In these conditions also you can have developed diabetes mellitus. And last of all, you can have gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes is diabetes.